Michelangelo's David and uh, he's very familiar to all of us and what is he doing here on this tour why do we start here I like to throw in because I am from Australia uh, I like to throw in that there's a lovely little Australian connection to him he's mentioned in a book by Timothy Comagrave who's film Holding the Man is actually going to be in the LGBT BFI Flair Film Festival this year. Highly recommend it. It's a fantastic book. Um, okay, yeah. Tim, some of you just chose not to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, we, we've had two series of LGBT History Month events this year. At the start, we launched the festival and now we're sort of wrapping things up. Uh, Trajan's Collar. So why are we here? Trajan is one of the five good emperors of Rome. He oversaw part of one of the most peaceful and bountiful eras of the Roman Empire. I'm going to say that all of you have one thing on your computer at the time. Oh, so much going on. Mm -hmm. It's a heavy. Okay, so this one is an interesting one. It's Samson slaying the Philistine. It's a biblical story. It's beautiful. It's one of the great treasures that we have in the This is in our treasure of the DNA. But this is why we have it, and it's a story that was to be the one part of the I've been told by some people that, you know, I, I wouldn't go there, but this is the man that would have been on the top of that column. So it's always nice to make put a face to a, to a name. Okay, so we have two people at the back. If you come up the stairs, you're going to get a, get a good view as well. Um, you'll probably be hearing something that you already know, but does anyone have a guess at who this is? Beautiful young man, eagle. Yes, absolutely. Jamie. Uh, the giveaway, of course, is the eagle pull up, and uh, she wasn't happy. She wanted him gone from the kingdom. And Zeus put up with so much nagging, and he eventually went, All right, I'll get rid of him. But he did so in a very clever way. He took him up and cast him in the sky as the star sign which has a lovely It's decision. not for the obvious reason. They are beautiful. Um, but it's because it's, it's a layered object. It's got lots and lots and lots of um, uh, tails to it. Uh, and part of the tale is that for quite a while, nationally, um, significant moments in, in, in LGBT history. Um, you know, nationally, we can talk about things like decriminalization of homosexuality shortly. Uh, but this moment in time is, is the reason why I mentioned nationally is because yeah, obviously Section 28 galvanized the communities here into action. This, I think, internationally has left its mark across the whole world. We've got AIDS organizations all across the world. And God for the point of, because that ensures that there is no concern that can happen. But uh, if you stand it, This is, because we started with David, I'd like to pause at the moment of David, just to give you an alternative vision of David. This is uh, a very oriental David, as opposed to the very uh, aquiline nosed Italian David that we saw over there. This one's sinewy, this one's uh, also a. So this is a French sculpture. Michael was 26 when he sculpted that. This chap here was 23 when he sculpted this. And for me, that's just remarkable um, that you can have that sort of skill at that age. <laughs> To, to run up a ladder, the assistant's holding it, and the curator would have to hook on the fig leaf with, and this is the academic member, with two strategically placed hooks. So, anyway. <laughs> and this seems unremarkable, it does. I have walked past this picture for about three years before I finally went, oh, right, it has some kind of LGBT connection. This frame is designed by a woman named Gluck. Her specification is, the frame should be painted the same colour as the wall of this object, which leans up against the column. On one side, there is a very masculine shoulder, square shoulder, a very masculine right side. On the left side, curved breast and curved hip in one object. It is a religious object, with al -Shadira. It is the union of Shiva and his con uh, consort Parvati. And they come together in this moment in the great, uh, great epic tale. And gets put on trial for gross indecency. What had happened, he is seeing uh, Alfred Bosi, son of a lord, 
and he's been dating him for a while. Lovely, beautiful man. Oscar's married, uh, but so he and both hang out together a lot. They're the best thing to do, and they took him to electric shock therapy to have him treated for it. And so I think that sort of pervaded across a lot of what he did creatively. This costume here, this bright and shiny costume here. Uh, with the stripes and the... When, when you tell someone to come with the bells and whistles on top, this person took it literally. There are bells and bicycle implements on it, uh, uh, mud guards, that sort of thing, because this was worn by a chap so much. <laughs> and if you do as well, the, one of these costumes, there were three, one of these costumes was picked up at a garage sale in Camden. They weren't particularly good at maintaining the costumes. Not, not us, the, the, the company itself. Michael Clark is the company. And Michael Clark recently performed in London, and it was amazing. This piece starts with the music of Lou Reed. So, just connecting all the dots now. And 